Good evening, our viewers in Nigeria, Africa, and around the world. Happy New Year to you. I'm really excited to see 2021, and I believe you're also excited to see this year after all that happened in year 2020. You are still watching Talking Out with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television, and my name is still Dr. Laz Eze. Yes, it's year 2021, new agenda, new year resolutions for different persons, uh, new plans, new calendar, new budgets, a lot of things coming new. And of course, this is our first program for the year. So this year, we are going to be looking at a lot of things. COVID-19 is still a prevalent, uh, you know, a reigning health condition, and it's going to be getting a lot of attention uh, on this program uh, is, uh, and going forward. We're also going to talk about so many other issues related to health, not just about the healthcare delivery, but also uh, about the commodities, the drugs, the consumables, and everything that is required because Nigeria needs to achieve medical security or health security, whichever language you prefer. Also on this program this year, we'll deep dive into medical education. We are going to look at the quality of medical training in various medical schools, uh, school of nursing, medical laboratory scientists, all those trainings because it must be of top quality. We're also going to be looking at the wrangling, the unhealthy relationship among healthcare workers in different hospitals, doctors versus nurses, uh, radiologists, uh, radiographers, medical lab scientists versus pathologists, all those fights that are not in the interest of the patient. We are going to be talking more about them. Likewise, the policies, the National Assembly, the State Assemblies, uh, the ministries at the state, local level, even private healthcare sector, everything that has to do with health, and that's what this program is all about. So we've done 18 episodes in 2020. This is the 19th, and this year, of course, we are going to be doing over 50 other episodes. So we thank you for all the support you gave us in the previous year. We believe you're still going to give us much more support as we keep talking health. Because without health, really, we have nothing. So 2021 to 2030, the Sustainable Development Goal number three that seeks to achieve global health is going to get a whole lot of priority. So Keep up the feedback because it helps us a lot to make this program achieve the primary goal of impacting our health sector positively. Today on the program, we have two guests and we are going to be reviewing COVID-19 pandemic control in Nigeria. So all we did in 2020, our guests are going to be looking at them. One of them is a health management expert who has experience both in Nigeria and the United States. We also have a member of the Make Our Hospital Work campaign, a campaign that was launched in the middle of last year by Nigerians to ensure that they get quality health care at the grassroots and in their own communities. So we take a break. Keep following us on social media and also subscribe to our YouTube channel if you are here to do so. I will see you right after the break and I will do further introduction of our guests. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Talking Out with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television. Uh, I'll introduce my guest right away. By my far left is Mr. Tony Samai, a health management expert, uh, chief operations officer of Foundation for People's Health, mm -hmm. of People's Health Foundation. Mm -hmm. And also he was a special assistant on health to the former Senate President, uh, Bukola Saraki. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Also by my immediate left mm -hmm. is Dr. David Obonna, is an optometrist and also a member of Make Our Hospital Work campaign. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, 2020 is a very interesting year in, in the health sector and has uh, shown so many things that nobody ever imagined. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, from around this time last year, when the coronavirus, the new variant, uh, that was later named COVID-19 started. Nobody would have imagined all the developments that happened this year. Uh, exactly 11th March this year, the World Health Organization declared it as a global pandemic. 
and so many things had happened from the lockdowns uh, to the restrictions to the talk about vaccines to all the conspiracy theories anyone can think about you know to the opening and now they much talked about second wave so uh, i want to ask you uh mr isama uh you have extensive experience mm -hmm. uh within the health space especially on health management mm -hmm. uh, how would you describe first the global response africa response then we later come to how nigeria has responded to this pandemic uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lars. Uh, it, uh, just like you said, uh, the novel uh, COVID-19, in its newness, uh, sprung on the world. Mm. Uh, sprung on the world with every, everything it has to give, and it's still giving. And the world is still uh, uh, pressing to understand it, uh, to live with it. Mm -hmm to manage the process, and uh, that's where we are at this point, that uh, every nation has been, uh, was more or less halted uh, and impacted in the process, that uh, is uh, primarily a, a health uh, crisis, a public health crisis, with uh, uh, extensive uh, magnitude that uh, shook up the whole uh, the whole world uh, in terms of all we do mm. because you have to be well to do any other thing exactly if you don't have health you don't even do any other stuff uh, it shook up the world and it shook up the world it shook up uh, every aspect of uh, our living uh, that uh, in trying to uh, contain or arrest the situation mm -hmm. that uh, he told uh, it's a situation that leveled uh, every being in the world. Yes, talking about leveling every being in mm -hmm. the world, yeah. uh, it's been said, uh, many persons are surprised yeah. about uh, Africa's performance or relatively lower uh, morbidity or deaths uh, occurring from COVID-19, you know, mm. earlier in the period of the pandemic, there were predictions that dead bodies would be lying on the streets of Africa. Mm. So how would you assess Africa's performance? You think uh, the outcomes you are seeing is because of how we've handled it or possibly some other causes? Uh, well, given again the novel nature of the virus, mm. we really can't put uh, at this point, say this is uh, why this has happened. Uh, but the interesting part is that uh, Africa has, uh, in some measures, uh, been a focus of being a, uh, an area where issues of pandemic or issues of epidemic have occurred over the years. Okay. Uh, we just uh, went through the Ebola crisis mm -hmm. and got off it. Uh, how we got off it is still, uh, still being defined. But we were able to live through it. Uh, but at least uh, in some measures, we have some level of resilience that uh, uh, we can attribute it to what we, uh, how we have lived. But that's, that's not really the true answer. Mm. Uh, is that uh, when you really come down to it, uh, our measurement is questionable. How we measure and keep our own data. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, follow up on what we're doing is also has a big question mark. Okay. Uh, but, but the interesting part is that uh, uh, we've been led uh, by leaders uh, uh, in every field uh, in the health sector to at least manage it at this point. And we also have been led to manage the other dislocations okay, that, sir. that have I, happened. I, I'll come back to you, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. David Obona, mm -hmm. uh, quickly, how would you assess Nigeria's response COVID-19 pandemic so far. Okay, um, thank you for having me. Um, I want to say that the NCDC has done well. Okay. Um, you know, in Nigeria and Africa generally, we have um, this I can do it spirit. Mm. So, but 
If I want to read NCDC, I would say that um, they have done 70 percent, you know, in trying to sensitize Nigerians and trying to let us know about this situation. Because um, just like, uh, you know, uh, he said, um, this is very, very novel in yes. our nation and uh, it's, it's something we are not used to. So something that comes so sudden and then having team of experts to go to understand and respond in that manner, I would say that they have done well. Okay, but the response is not all about NCDC. They are playing their role. You have the presidential task force. Yes. You have the state government. You have private sector. You know, the overall government of this uh, response. You know, are, are you satisfied with what we've done so far as a country? Um, I, I was coming to that. Yes, you know, we don't have all the Yes, yeah, so, so um, NCDC being the in charge of a um, situation like this mm -hmm. has provided enough information. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the state government, the local government, I feel and I know that they've not done well. Okay, which Na areas do you think? Yes, because well? when you're looking at uh, during a political campaign or stuff like that, mm -hmm. every areas are reached. Mm -hmm. So I feel that the rural areas has not been saturated with enough information. Okay. If you go to the local places, you see that the attitude of people to COVID-19 is quite different. They don't understand what you are talking about. Is it because they don't have the information or because they don't believe the information they are given? Because if you don't convince people enough, mm. they don't buy the idea. Okay. So I feel that the same way they say the idea to them in various words, the same way this sensitization could go down there to the locals and okay. then they won't understand in their own languages. So, but if you go and then give them face masks and give them hand sanitizer, when last I traveled home, I, I found sanitizer and face masks littered everywhere. People were they shared. Were not using it? They were not using it. Because, Why? because they were not convinced that there is something called coronavirus. Okay. So, so they need to be properly sensitized. Yes. Uh, you talk about conviction. People don't believe, right? Yes. Perhaps the approach through which they were engaged. Some have argued that uh, the channels through which they were first engaged you know, were uh, po possibly political actors who they don't even trust in the first place, right? So because they first heard about COVID-19, they thought it was one of those lies that they were being told by polit some political actor, but that's an assumption. That yes, is, uh, it's also not. added to it. Okay, uh, we'll get back to uh, our health management expert. You talked to the media, I think, last week, mm. and... Uh, it was widely reported, and there's a statement you made, sir. You said, Nigerians have largely refused to embrace the new normal way of life. Yeah. And it is only if leaders at all levels would take up their responsibilities in the country by showing the right way to go about the devastating effects of the second waves of the killer virus can elude the country. So by this, I, I, are you trying to say that we should hold the leaders responsible for the refusal of citizens to adhere the, uh, to the COVID-19 uh, prevention protocols or guidelines. Yeah, okay, the, there's need to more for more voices. Okay. There's need for, uh, it's not just the PTF, the anguished voice has there is the PTF. Mm. They're the ones that have been uh, screaming of what is, what is on or what is coming down. That is, there is extreme need for voices from the health professions, from leadership of health. Mm -hmm. There are needs for voices from political leaders in terms of advising and engaging the student, uh, the, the citizens, because it's a life-saving issue. It's not you are not imposing on them. It's a life-saving issue by wearing a mask. I'm protecting myself, I'm protecting my family, I'm protecting my neighbors. Mm. And in that sense, I'm protecting the lives of our city, the general citizenship. So it's that notion that has to be embraced. It's not... Uh, by the leadership. By the leadership at every level. Okay. But the citizens have to understand, they have to be let know that this is a life-saving preventive measure. Mm -hmm. It's not that you are being imposed. Not to wear a mask. Yes, or to you, not talked about yeah, to uh, use sanitizer. Yeah, because the, if the person understands that it's for their own safety mm. and the safety of their family, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's that continuous coaching that has to come at play. 
Uh, so it's the individuals that uh, we really need to uh, some level of strictness won't work. Mm. It's that education, but it has to come. He mentioned he used the word trust. People uh, you need, people you can trust. Ordinarily, okay. people trust their doctors. They trust their midwife. That so if they hear it coming from them, and they see it, uh, it's, it's not it's not an obstruction. Well, so, some may argue that we've, possi uh, we've possibly gone beyond that stage because you have, right you, now, you, you know, when you, well, like you said, midwives talk ab talk about it. People mm -hmm. will still tell you, save us from this. Uh, you know, you people are making money from this. No, well, th th that that's that's, that's the uh, erroneous notion. Mm. And nobody is making money from COVID. You know, your supply chains are in tatters. Where are they making money? Mm -hmm. okay, okay, sir. <laughs> Just before we uh, take the break, I yeah. want to quickly ask you there. Uh, you know, I, 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 we made this uh, post on social media and asked the question mm. Are you going to support a second lockdown? And there's uh, a response you made. You said, Lockdown, no. We can deploy other means to cope with the situation. There is hunger in the land. It could kill more than COVID-19. I know a lot of Nigerians share in this sentiment. For me, hunger in the land is more an emergency situation, more of an emergency situation, and worse pandemic than COVID-19. Can you expatiate on that? Yes. Um, if you see people flouting the rules of COVID-19, mm. it's because they are looking for survival, because they are hungry. So you cannot restrict them at home when they are hungry. So I feel that we could deploy other means of coping with the situation what without going to lockdown. Means? Yes. Other means like um, putting every necessary step, mm -hmm. like sensitizing people to know they need to protect themselves. Okay, massive we, education, yes. behavioral change, exactly. communication. Okay, what well, so we have been told that if you protect yourself, you cannot contract this. Okay. So which institutions at the local level do you think could do this? See, uh, like I said, if our leaders want to pass information or get something from citizens, they know how to do it. They know how to get so to them. So they should deploy the campaign exactly. strategies, like you said. Down to the world. Okay. Th people should, should be trained down to the world. Okay. So they go out to discharge this information to them. Okay. I think the, <laughs> the messages are clear enough. Uh, we are going to take another break. And when we return... Uh, my guests will briefly assess our performance in the health sector this year and possibly share what they think we need to do better going into the new year. Do stay with us. We'll be right back shortly. <music> Welcome back to Talking Air with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television. Yes, uh, we are back and we, this is the concluding segment. Um, being the last one in the year, uh, we're going to quickly review some of the major things that are happening in the health sector. Yes, in January 2020, New Year, life began, and we're hearing about COVID-19 happening in China, from China to some parts of Asia, then to Europe, to America, and I think on ending of February, it landed in Nigeria. But Beyond COVID-19, Lassa fever was the one we're dealing with from 2019 up to 2020. And Nigeria had the biggest Lassa fever outbreak in its history. You know, many persons died. Over, uh, as of January, more than 100 Nigerians had died of Lassa fever. NCDC was still dealing with that before COVID-19, and a lot of things changed. From there, the lockdown happened in March, April, so many other things. But other things that happened, the Basic Healthcare Provision Fund uh, implementation guidelines were also, was also reviewed sometime this year. Then there were a lot of opinions around it because the National Health Act, many persons argued, has not been sufficiently implemented. So I want to quickly uh, ask you, let me start this time from uh, Dr. Bonna. Holistically, how would you say our health system or the Nigerian sector have fared in 2020? You could quickly mention things that worked well for you and things that you think we needed to have done better. Dr. Laz, um, you know, um, as a member of um, 
make our hospital work. Mm. We started that campaign because we know that it's not working. So we have not felt well in, in our health sector this year. From the budget allocation mm. to the implementation of the minute allocation on the budget, it has not been properly utilized. If you go to some rural areas, mm -hmm. there is no health facility. Even the health centers are not functional. Okay. Go to the rural villages, you see. Are they functional in the urban, uh, urban areas? For instance, here in Abuja here, if you go around, you, you will see for yourself. Mm -hmm. Even when you have a facility, there are no medical um, workers to attend to patients. So these are the areas that need proper attention. Mm -hmm. There is no pretending about it. Nigeria should give priority in 2021, priority to health sector. Because they said um, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. So okay. I think we need improvement. Right, we, we need improvement, uh, definitely. Uh, Mr. Isama, uh, you worked with the past Senate president where you were involved in a number of health policies or engagements that happened at the national level. Are you satisfied, you know, a year after uh, you left office with how our health sector had felt, particularly uh, the implementation of the National Health Act 2014? Okay, that's, uh, that's interesting uh. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let me take you back to COVID, because COVID, what it has done, mm. is forced every country to look at its, its health system. Every country, the pressure is in trying to sustain its health system. Every country, no matter their size. So that's where we are, uh, that we are at the point where we have an opportunity to kickstart and reassess where we are. As a matter of fact, or at least from my own point of view, we don't know some of the things we have. Mm. We have some good stuff in the country happening. We have some new stuff happening. He mentioned the NCDC, which is going, tells you the power of institutions. Mm. And uh, when uh, the law that uh, created the NCD was passed, that was in our own time too. And you see the value, the reportage of the Lassa fever, is because you have a functioning NCDC. Lassa fever has always been happening. But yes. this time you were able to document it. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this, this particular situation is an opportunity to reassess our health system. Okay, now you've mentioned that uh, NCDC Act, yeah. uh, just before we end the program. Yeah. The Act provided for 2.5% mm -hmm. of the basic healthcare provision fund should go for health security, mm -hmm. you know, should be given to NCDC. But uh, around the middle of this year, the implementation guidelines for the basic healthcare provision fund was revised and the 2.5% that should go to NCDC for health security was taken out because in the opinion of those who revised it, they said that it was not part of the, uh, the National Health Act. So how would you respond to this development in amid a, a, you know, a pandemic that we are still struggling to? Well, to, that, to that, that's interesting uh, anyway, because uh, I like the word you use, uh, health security. There's more to health security than NCDC. Mm -hmm. There's much more. You have your essential drugs. Mm -hmm. How many of it are we producing in this country? How many of it are we protecting the little producers we have, making sure that we can have that essential? So that's a, it's good that at least uh, you picked on uh, the issue of the health security and some amount of money that was uh, put on. Those are all the things that need to be reviewed. They might have their reason uh, to uh, maybe revise what they did. Uh, but if uh, health security is critical, and uh, as we have seen, pandemic mm -hmm. would always would occur. This one has occurred, more are coming. So uh, a stronger NCDC will help us, and uh, we will definitely come to it. Mm. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, I wish we could continue, okay. but we are heavily constrained uh, by time. Yeah. Uh, I really thank you, uh, Mr. Tony Sama, mm. the former si special assistant on health to the Senate president in the Eighth Assembly, mm. as well as the health management expert. Mm. We are privileged to have you on this program, sir. Okay, thank you.
and Dr. David Obona and optometrist. I think I should have you in future talking about eye diseases and all that. Yeah. And a member glad. of the Make Our Hospital Work campaign. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Lars. Thank you very much for being with us uh, on the program. That's the much we can take today. Uh, I believe that uh, subsequently you keep still uh, being with us on, on, on it. So same station, same time next week. My name is still Dr. Lars Eze. Let's keep watching the program and let's keep talking health on social media. Bye for now.